What I want to say today comes from a very personal perspective. Um, it does resonate, though, I think, with, uh, with some of the themes we've been hearing about, about juxtaposition, montage, perhaps, institutions and their different roles, the status of the curator, and also links between, uh, kind of underlying this between the lines is something about academia um, and the museum. I'm here as an art historian who curated an exhibition once. Um, and I'm working on the possibility of, uh, note all those conditions, uh, curating another one. Reflecting on this experience, I've been mulling over the temporary art exhibition as a genre and the question of what type of exhibitions are possible and seemingly impossible in certain contexts. I'm also interested um, in what forms exhibitions need to take in order to be possible. I don't think I've reached any firm conclusions, but I hope it's useful to offer some suggestions in any case. The exhibitions I've been interested in doing are what you might call idea-based exhibitions, bringing together objects from several different categories that are normally kept separate, um, which then coalesce around a theme or an idea. The aim is to open is to introduce new frameworks, open up new connections, new ways of looking at and understanding familiar and unfamiliar objects. Now, while these objects that uh, I've used in the one exhibition I've curated were not always art objects, what I really am interested in doing exhibitions that are in some way about art and that have questions about art, art historical questions at their center. So that's on the one hand a statement about my own area of interest and the area in which I seek to make an intervention, but it also has very significant implications for the position that I can adopt as a curator. Um, above all the institutions, museums and galleries that come into the frame and the possibilities that might be available to me curatorially. The exhibition I was involved in as co-curator um, was called Madness and Modernity. You can see a couple of installation shots of it here uh, at the Welcome Collection just around the corner in 2009. Uh, Welcome Collection, of course, being um, a very, uh, uh, really a unique institution in that it is a private institution, extremely well funded, um, and uh, has this specific mandate to look at issues of human health um, and medicine. Uh, and that have developed a really innovative and well-respected set of exhibitions and curatorial techniques. The exhibition there was working across two sets of boundaries that would normally, uh, uh, conventionally, uh, contain our art exhibitions. One of those boundaries is between fine art on the one hand and architecture and design on the other. The other boundary is between art and what you might call non-art. So there was a door from a padded cell in it. There were medical equipment, etc. I'm now at the beginning stages of another exhibition proposal. Uh, so it's at the stage where the, a very full proposal has been developed, but we don't have anywhere to put it on yet. But we're in, uh, in discussions, shall we say, with Tate Britain. The idea came out of conversations with a colleague, Christine Stevenson, at the Courtauld Institute who works on 17th and 18th century British architecture. My area is early 20th century Central European architecture and design and urbanism. It's about the single room defined as a room for the use of or occupation by one person who is alone inside that room or normally alone inside the room. Examples of single rooms might be cells, cubicles, boudoirs, studies, offices, hermitages, dens. We're interested in the single room as a spatial unit in the built environment that was particularly culturally loaded with both positive emancipatory associations and negative carceral ones, often at the same time. We're also interested in, in it as a, not just as a space, but as a very important thing, an important issue in art, cropping up again and again as a protagonist, a key framer and generator of meaning in all media, from painting, through photography, installation, video, etc. The collaborative element here as well is key. Christine and I are coming at it from different periods and geographies 
And through our own research and also our teaching and wider reading and picking the brains of our colleagues, we are becoming aware of a range of examples from across time and place. There's also something about the theme of single rooms, we would argue, that lends itself to a cross-period treatment. And I'm flagging that up in, in the three examples I'm showing you here. Things that you can do that would be impossible if you restricted yourself to a particular moment. So we came, come up with this idea, and we decide we want to do it as an exhibition. And that's where the story um, gets interesting for us, um, thinking about curating. Now, we wanted, I really wanted to do it at the Welcome, where it had a, a very positive experience, but it really wouldn't work for the Welcome. It's not squarely enough about these areas of medicine and health. At the same time, it's very difficult to imagine another institution in London, and indeed elsewhere, that would do it as a mixed art, non-art, cross-period show, which is what we wanted to do originally. But when it became clear that it, it wasn't going to work with the welcome, um, it did seem possible to do it as to do it quite compellingly with art objects only. Uh, that seemed to be the next step we needed to take was to reconfigure it with art objects only. And since several of the key objects that we want to include are in Tate's collection, we've decided to recast it as a proposal for an exhibition about an idea in British art from the 17th century to the present. Tate comes into the frame because of what it has, but above all because it does thematic exhibitions. It famously or infamously reinstalled its permanent collection that, uh, in Tate Britain as a mixed thematic hang when Tate Modern opened in 2000, although of course that's now reverted to a chronological exhibition at Tate Britain. <laughs> Most recently, Tate Britain has done thematic cross-period exhibitions on the themes of iconoclasm and ruins. Now, it won't be a surprise to you, but I think it's worth stating that the vast majority of exhibitions of past art, uh, this, uh, in distinction to exhibitions of contemporary art, are organized according to one of the following models. And I'll give you examples from, that are on in London now or about to open. There's, of course, the monographic single artist show. Uh, so Rubens at the Royal Academy at the moment. There's the movement show, pop art coming up at Tate Modern. There's an era show, Victorian sculpture at Tate Britain. This uh, kind of adherence to um, repeated models of framing exhibitions is in marked contrast to exhibitions in, for example, historical or city museums, or many of the types of museums that we've been talking about today, where the thematic or mixed media and or mixed media exhibition is now the standard mode, really. Uh, and has transformed the display of permanent collections as well. But there are, every once in a while, big cross-period thematic art, art exhibitions. When they do happen, they tend not to be part of the exhibition program of art museums narrowly defined. So you get, find them at the Barbican, at the Whitechapel, um, at places that don't have their own permanent collections. The Hayward used to do them, but no longer. The critical reception of this type of exhibition falls into two categories. On the one hand, there is, it often, they often generate a lot of excitement about ideas, debates, new connections about the relevance of art in the way that traditionally framed exhibitions might not so much. But on the other hand, as you'll be aware, they also generate outrage, annoyance, disappointment, even calls for the director's head on a plate, as recently happened um, in the case of Tate and those exhibitions I mentioned. So they're a risky proposition. Now you would hope that good ideas about uh, that you would hope that good ideas and good curation, compelling juxtapositions, would themselves be the uniting forces making these exhibitions work, just as they would any type of exhibition. But I would argue that anxiety about this particular type of cross-period thematic exhibition leads to an, a reliance on on a certain organizing tropes. The key one is that a really big. It's best if a really well-known curator is involved. The curator auteur, to use a term um, that's been developed by uh, Natalie Heineck and Michael Pollack. The creator not as keeper, but as author, or auteur, auteur, to use the film jargon. 
So an identifiable pers person, curator with a persona, a reputation, a great mind, acting as a unifying force, seem tying seemingly disparate things together. And if you look at the history of these big thematic exhibitions, the names that crop up are Jean Claire, uh, Harold Zeman, etc. I've got my end note, so I'll draw it to a close there. But I guess I'll just end by saying that um, that if we're able to do the exhibition, we'll then encounter the next series of challenges about selection, juxtaposition, structure, presentation, tightness or looseness of, of organizing, of overarching arguments. Um, but whether we get there is still very much an open question. We are not Jean Claire and uh, Harold Zeman, that's for sure. Um, but we, if we end up buried in the graveyard of proposals for thematic exhibitions, it might be interesting to think about that graveyard as a great site for research, what's ended up there and why. Thanks. Thanks.